today i'm going to share with you guys the best equipment for every single troop type in rise of kingdoms as well as the order with which you should upgrade this equipment as you progress through the game and why some of you might actually want to start using the sakura fubuki again i know controversial statement but there's a lot we have to talk about and finally near the end of the video i'm going to be sharing with you which pieces i think you should be putting your iconic crystals into once you finally get a hold of them now before we begin i have to give credit where credit is due this video stands on the shoulders of a ton of other content creators who have done testing for these pieces of equipment this includes of course Chiskel gaming and wick gaming so i will have links to their videos in the description below make sure you go ahead and check them out although i'm sure you guys have already seen a lot of their content okay let's just jump right into it because i have a feeling that this is going to be a long video and if you want to help it defeat the youtube algorithm consider dropping a thumbs up on the video and subscribing to the channel it really does help out a ton all right today let's start with cavalry and of course we have the vanguard halberd here on the screen for a reason the first two pieces you're going to want for cavalry are the vanguard halberd and the legs that are also a part of the vanguard set the vanguard greaves the reason for this is because for a green set the advanced pieces give you a ton of bonus and you also get a set bonus for having both of these pieces on as well and you can see here that with only two pieces it literally gives you a nice chunk of every single stat for cavalry which is amazing value then you want to add the expedition war helm and then you want to add the windswept chest boots and gloves all of which have a cavalry special talent this is an extremely cheap and easy early game build to obtain and you're also going to gain a troop bonus with the windswept set as well of course you do miss out on the four piece set for the for the windswept but having the expedition war helm is just a better play overall in fact this helmet right here is going to carry you through a majority of the game when it has the special talent it gives you almost as much cavalry defense as the non-talented legendary helmet and so it's kind of just a, a no-brainer to have it right off the bat and again this is a budget build this is where you want your cavalry set to begin you then want to replace the chest with the dark lord's blessing and the gloves with Iset's sufferance both of these are going to give you a slight bump in stats especially when they have the special talents then you want to replace the legs with the gladiator with talon and you want to finally replace the weapon with of course everyone's favorite the heart of the saint also with a special talent now i know for a lot of free to play players or maybe people who are new to the game this may seem like it will take forever because getting the talents on these purple pieces may feel like a struggle considering how long it takes get your hands on some of these blueprints in the early game I totally understand that but once you get to this point you're actually at a pretty good spot eventually you're going to want to replace the windswept boots with the boots of the hellish wasteland even if it doesn't have the special talent on it most likely you will not get the special talent here I hope you do fingers crossed but most of the time when you craft legendaries it's unfortunately not going to be crits so just keep that in mind and set your expectations appropriately you'll want to replace the chest piece with the heavy armor of the hellish wasteland again this probably will not be crits but you're exchanging a cavalry defense for cavalry health which is exceptionally good this will also gain you the two set bonus here for cavalry which will give you three percent more health which is incredible and then you also want to come over here and replace the gloves with Navarre's control again probably will not be special talent but you're going to get eight percent cavalry health this is an exceptionally good value for a piece especially because it's not even a set piece which we love now at this point you are popping off as they say this is an exceptionally good build and you could also get a micro optimization by replacing the helmets as well now realistically the pride of the con is going to be your best choice for helmet the fact that it's a kvk piece is going to make it a bit harder for you to obtain especially if you're not a cavalry main and you're going to be spending those kvk coins on other things if that's the case you could probably go with the war helm war helm of the hellish wasteland which is nice and then eventually you'll want to replace the legs with the ash of the dawn again probably not going to be special talent here this is the last piece that you upgrade because if you don't get the special talent you're really only going to get like one and a half percent more more cavalry health than if you just kept the purple piece so just keep that in mind this is a smaller upgrade for sure unless of course you get the talent on any of these pieces which would be incredible and then finally you're going to want to go for the sacred dominion
minion again this is another kvk shop piece which is extremely expensive especially because you're replacing cavalry defense on heart of the saint for cavalry attack with sacred dominion which in general is not usually a good trade-off except here you're getting so much more stats that it's incredible and uh eventually you're going to want to special talent it you if you can get a crit on this that would be incredible absolutely like ridiculous probably the best crit that you could get here maybe besides the pride of the con and then when all is said and done you obviously want to continue to attempt to get the crits on all of these pieces clearly it's going to be hardest for the kvk pieces here here, all right but this is like if you are a mega kraken late game ultra well who is willing to spend five six figures seven figures on this game this is what you're going to be looking at as far as accessories go for cavalry i think ring of doom makes a ton of sense for a majority of the cavalry commanders as well as the horn of fury to gain just extra rage for the most amount of skill shots i mean we're looking at commanders like xy like nevsky these are commanders with insane amounts of skill damage and the more uh, rage you get the more skill damage you're going to deal it's also worth noting that you could put the mora's web on your cavalry armies because this does have a slowdown effect and of course your cavalry are going to be the ones that are most likely to catch up to the units that you want to slow down to begin with so i think mora's web again is a decent choice although i typically would probably put this on infantry we'll talk about that later the greatest glory and vengeance are both extremely good if you have Attila Takeda so keep that in mind and finally the concealed dagger is pretty much just like something you could put on anybody so you can't go wrong there but for most of you you're gonna want a talented silent trial or Delane's amulet probably silent trial first I think this is just an amazing piece especially considering how much rage regeneration there is on the field now especially with Joan and William and Trajan and oh my god it's insane next let's talk about archers we're going to start with the helm of the Phoenix with the special talents leather gloves for a little bit of extra health the commander's heavy armor chest piece also for more archer health we love that Reeve of the exile for some extra defense there which is beautiful we'll throw the staff of the lost in for extra defense which we love and then for the boots you could start with the sturdy boots these are fine you get three percent extra defense but eventually you're going to want to upgrade them to the flame treads these get you the most amount of archer health and here you can see that we have literally no archer attack and that is fine archers typically have a ton of attack anyways and you're gonna get 42 percent extra attack in kvk tech alone so yeah that's totally fine and of course this is going to be your budget early game build that you're going to build off of so this is where you want to start and then luckily for us archers actually have an epic set which is a no-brainer that's going to be the best that you can do from this starting point here i would start with the revival helm and then replace the legs with the revival greaves this is going to give you a two set bonus that gives you some bonus troop attack then you'll throw on the revival gloves and finally you'll do the revival chest plate as well and boom now you have a little bit more uh archer attack there and then the last piece you're going to upgrade is going to be to the golden age which honestly i don't know why archers have such a beautiful freaking sword but dude what is this this is insane art archer defense look at how cool this blade is man how is this archer what do you mean archer my guy anyway a talented golden age is going to give you a ton of extra archer defense this staff had it already but once you can talent the golden age obviously that's going to be better and then boom this is sort of your mid game build for archers and definitely something that you can consider using in season of conquest of course having some legendary pieces in here is going to be better for sure and if you're an archer main you want to upgrade this as fast as possible now the first pieces that you want to upgrade are the chest and the gloves because again archers already have a lot of attack in general so replacing the attack pieces first is going to be key now remember that this is a set here okay so by having a four piece set you're gaining the extra three percent defense so realistically you probably want to replace these two pieces around the same time because as soon as you replace one you lose the four set bonus if you have to pick one to replace first I would replace the chest piece with the dragon's breath plate this is immediately going to give you a ton of archer health even if you don't have the special talent here if you do even better and then as soon as you can you want to replace the gloves with the dragon breath gloves now of course these do give you archer attack as well however it will give you the three percent troop attack bonus for having two pieces of course this probably won't be talented but realistically I think this is a good place to start to replace 
your revival set for archers next you're going to replace the boots because these are going to give you some nice archer defense and you're going to be working towards the four set bonus fortunately in order to replace the helmet and the legs you're going to have to replace them with attack pieces and at that point you really want the upgrades here to be special talented and of course we're talking about the ancestral mask of the night this is an incredible piece but again you're replacing defense for attack which you already have a ton of on arches and with kvk tech and once you do that you're you're losing the the revival set anyways so you might as well go through and grab the dragon's breath tacits which is going to give you the four set bonus for archers with the chest gloves legs and boots probably not going to be special talented here as well and then finally for the giga chad mega whales you're going to want the hydra's blast for your weapon just like cavalry we have two of the season of conquest shop items here in the form of the helmet and the weapon uh at this point you have an incredibly good build but it's going to be extremely expensive again you really want to with the helmet and with the legs you really want them talented to make replacing the two-piece revival set even more worth it and then eventually if you have enough time or money or if you're an archer main and you go all in you're gonna have a set just just like this one here with a special talent on everything and you're going to be a literal god when it comes to accessories for archers obviously again ring of doom here is it's a no-brainer this is just giving you bonus damage which if you guys didn't know archers have a ton of damage right now in the form of Boudicca YSG Nebu even Artemisia right now has insane damage Henry for rallies like it's incredible so ring of doom is a no-brainer and of course horn of fury again I think is exceptionally good on archers the dagger is good pretty much everywhere and archers honestly I, they don't really have a, a super tanky marches I mean you could do like Artemisia with the defense tree and then Boudicca secondary and that's kind of a defensive March or you could even do a mandatory as well and if you do that then maybe vengeance is something that you can consider but other than that those are the really the only three pieces that I would consider here ring of doom horn of fury and conceal dagger in that order unless you have a tanky March uh, but for most of you again silent trial is going to be incredible if you did a ring of doom and silent trial I think that would be insane especially with the talent here on the silent trial uh for me I'm currently using Delane's amulet mainly because I just don't have anything else for archers but also um I find that archers are they're a little bit squishy and they are often targeted because of the chance of there being a YSG secondary so reducing the counter attack damage you take when you're getting swarmed is decent something you can consider although this is definitely not going to make or break your tankiness I just want to say for sure this is a very small optimization for an otherwise squishy March finally we are moving on to infantry and of course everybody knows the gatekeeper shield is absolutely insane now of course you could start with the blessed blade this gives you a nice eight percent infantry health as well but eventually you're going to get the gatekeeper shield and you're going to have this for a very long time so just keep that in mind this shield is insane and we're going to talk about this compared to the Sakura Fubuki later but yeah overall you're going to want to do this with essentially the windswept set except this time it's going to be talented for infantry as before we talented it for cavalry this is going to give you a four set bonus the march speed is extremely important for infantry especially in the early game when you have slow some of the slower infantry commanders although Martel and Alexander the Great do have some march speed which is nice but in general infantry are going to be your slowest tankiest marches so this 20 percent march speed bonus is going to be incredible and you'll start with the Rangers trousers but realistically you can just use them until you can replace it with Karak's humility this is uh by far one of the best infantry sets in the game particularly because of how much uh infantry health it's giving you with the talent it's ten and a half percent you could see that for me I'm using it on three different marches it's actually insane and I think this is a very good place to start for all infantry marches and all infantry players the first piece you want to replace here are the boots throw on the frost treads with the special talent and this is going to give you a very solid bump in defense now you do immediately lose lose the set bonus with the March speed so that is unfortunate but that just means that now we have no reason not to replace a second piece 
uh of the windswept set and of course seth's brutality is going to be an obvious next step here we're just going to get a ton of extra infantry defense again and that's going to be a trend for infantry just straight up stacking defense for days baby eventually you'll replace the helmet with witch's lineage also with a special talent because it just gives you more attack and then at that point you don't have the windswept set bonus anymore so that's when you're going to switch over to the quinn's soul now i don't love the quinn's soul it gives you a ton of extra infantry attack which really you don't need but it's just so much more stats than the windswept chest piece that you're just going to use it here until you can replace it now the two best pieces you want to replace first are going to be the last two that we just put on there ironically which is the chest and the helmet so starting with the chest the hope cloak is actually going to be an exceptionally good piece even though it is not a set piece because it flat out gives you a ton of stats and if you take a look at the uh the infantry set piece here it's giving you more infantry attack which just just no you just you just don't want this um a lot of infantry commanders have a ton of attack already we're talking about Guan Yu we're talking about Harold we're talking about Alexander the Great I mean all these commanders have so many so much infantry attack already on top of the infantry attack you're going to get from KVK technology that stuff like this chess piece is it's just useless so go straight for the hope cloak and if you can get the talent on there Ooh, baby that is beautiful next you'll go for the golden helm of the eternal empire probably not going to be talented but regardless you're trading that infantry attack for more infantry defense and that's what you want you want to be a tanky infantry march so that way you can sustain all of the hits you're going to take in the open field especially if you are a little bit squishy like our boy guan over there a lot of people use guan okay so that's a it's good to have more defense on guan eventually you're going to want to replace the gloves with the van braces of the eternal empire probably won't be talented which means you're literally going to trade seven and a half percent uh of the of the defense from the talented purple piece to a non-talented equivalent seven and a half percent which is a bummer except you get the three percent troop bonus so it is technically an upgrade regardless if you already have the helmet so either way you can look at it if you don't get the talent it's still a three percent troop defense bump if you do get the talent then oh my god that's incredible this set right here is already extremely good and honestly everything else that you change here is sort of a micro optimization until you get into the giga chad super kraken whale status okay that's when you're really going to start to see a massive difference but again right here this is beautiful this is perfect I have this build on like three different marches and it's insane luckily I was able to get the special talent on two of my hope cloaks which was wild now you can replace the frost treads with the talent with the sturdy boots of the eternal empire and again just like with the gloves it's an it's an even exchange for the same exact stat the reason that you would replace it is a you have the chance of talenting and eventually you will talent it and B if you do go for the full set for infantry you'll 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 get an extra bonus but realistically you're you're not going to do that eventually you can actually replace the talented Karox humility with the eternal knights I would honestly only do this replacement if you can get the talent on the eternal lane meaning you uh, you would save up a bunch of materials and save up a bunch of blueprints and just try to get the talent I mean obviously you don't want to save the blueprints I guess because if you get lucky with the talent then it's kind of a waste of spending on the blueprints but you get what I mean you're really going to notice the biggest difference by getting the talent on the eternal knight otherwise it's not that big of an upgrade unless you plan on using Herald without Pakal meaning if you're going to do like a Herald Alex for example then you probably want to use the Eternal Knights even if it doesn't have the special talent and that's just because Herald is going to be reducing his own defense and that's going to hurt really badly so having the extra defense on the Eternal Light to offset that defense reduction is going to be great but again for most players having that talented Karak's humility is going to be fine for most scenarios now I know you're looking at that blue shield and you're saying Omniarch what about the Sakura Fubuki okay it's a higher rarity and a higher rarity must mean that it's a better weapon but in fact this is only true in some particular circumstances that you may find yourself in and many pairs with Scipio may encourage you to switch to the Sakura Fubuki why is this okay well first of all let's talk about why people use the gatekeeper shield so much okay the reason is because even though the Sakura Fubuki with the talent gives you way more stats we're talking about 17 and a half percent of uh of attack versus 10 and a half percent of gatekeeper shield so many people pick the gatekeeper shield over the Sakura Fubuki even though it has more stats because health is so much more premium for infantry and 
again a lot of commanders for infantry have a ton of extra attack but on top of that you gain 42 percent of extra attack in kvk tech alone and health is really difficult to come by so why is health so good let me explain this to you very simply okay and this is a little bit of a tangent from what we were discussing but let's talk about what do the stats even do like what do these stats even mean right your attack is how much damage you're going to deal to the enemy your defense is going to reduce the amount of damage that you take from the enemy and your health is how much damage your troops can take before they die or they get severely wounded or whatever now the battle formula for rise of kingdoms technically has never officially been revealed a lot of players have sort of figured it out by this point but what we found out through a ton of testing and credit to Chiskel Gaming and to Wick Gaming and a lot of people who did testing with this, it's best to have these three stats similar within range to one another. What I mean by this is that when you send an army out into the open field, you want your attack, defense, and health to be as close as they can be to one another for the maximum amount of trades. And by trades, I mean the most amount of damage you're dealing to the enemy in exchange for mitigating the most amount of damage that you take with the fewest amount of deaths. I mean, that's that's the goal, right? Is to deal as much damage as you can whilst out surviving your enemy. So in that way, it's a ratio. And it turns out that realistically, the best ratio that you can have is having these three close to one another. The problem is it's really hard to gain health it just is health does not appear in very many places it does show up in your uh, you know in your academy when you're researching here you have some general health that you get in the form of like uh, herbal medicine and things like that but if you go through you get way more attack and defense in your military technology than you do health and on top of that again if you look at your kvk tech this is at the time of recording this all attack it's all attack that's all you get from kvk technology in the form of attack formation and also for the individual unit types you also gain like bonus damage and swarm damage and stuff like that over here so in general you're always going to have more attack than you will health it's very rare that you're going to have more health than anything so now that we've gone off on that tangent explaining the differences in stats when you're looking at the sakura fubuki even though it gives you a ton of attack it's not that helpful because you already have a ton of attack especially on infantry commanders and so the only commanders where you might consider using a special talented sakura fubuki and if it's not talented just it's don't even like don't even it's not worth it at all in any scenario but if it is talented you may want to consider it with commanders who will give you a minimum of 40 percent infantry health a minimum of 40 percent infantry health and there aren't that many commanders that do that okay Zenobia gives you 20 percent of infantry health here but she also has a ton of extra health on her active skill Constantine gives you 40 percent of infantry health on his uh on his second skill here which is incredible but besides that there's no commanders that give you a ton of infantry health in the game however we have to look at Scipio a little bit closer because just like Zenobia he does give you 20 percent of infantry health and so if you pair him with somebody like Charles Martel who also gives you 20 percent of infantry health at that point you might want to consider the Sakura Bubuki sorry I messed that up but take a look at your boy take a look at your boy Mehmed okay he also gives you 20 percent of troop health which if you do a CPO primary with Mehmed secondary with the actual museum buff you might want to consider the Sakura Fubuki that might actually be a really solid play not only because you have 40 percent of extra health just in total that's insane but also because the bonus attack points are going to increase the amount of skill damage that you're dealing with Scipio's primary and with Mehmed's primary both of which are pretty powerful oh my god that's not Mehmed both of which are pretty powerful AoEs which we love to see but also Scipio is reducing the enemy health so when you're talking about a trade per perspective uh it might actually be pretty useful to have the Sakura Fubuki here now one other thing you can consider is if everyone's using CPO then everyone's going to be getting a ton of health reductions and in that scenario maybe you want to consider keeping the gatekeeper shield all of that to say that for some commanders it might be better to use the Sakura Fubuki but for most commanders it is not 
and even still even on the commanders where it may make a difference I don't think the difference is going to be massive so the gatekeeper shield being a blue piece as a budget build is exceptionally good now let's finish off the inventory equipment for those giga chad super krakens you want to talent the eternal knights talent the gloves talent the boots and then you probably want to go for a talented helm of the conqueror now this kind of sucks right because for most players you don't even want to try to get this talented right because it's probably not gonna happen so just going for the the set piece is probably just a better deal in general but for, again for those giga chad krakens the helm of the conqueror is undoubtedly going to be your best in slot headpiece as well as the hope cloak with the talent now for the weapon i would say that it's probably safe to replace the gatekeeper shield with a hammer of the sun and moon even if it's not talented because at that point you're getting so much more attack that gosh it's it's just so good okay but eventually you'll want to go for that talent and that brings us to the giga chad super well ceo build okay where you have again two of the kvk shop pieces here with the talent everything else with the talent and only the two set bonus from the gloves and the boots with the extra defense now as far as accessories go for inventory I do think they have a little bit more whale room than the other troop types that we talked about before because they're a bit more tanky and these are the commanders that I would trust the concealed dagger and Mora's web with the most okay the reason for this is because these are applying a debuff to the targets and that means that anyone hitting that target is gaining the benefit of that target being debuffed and so that's super good that's better than buffing your own March if you can stay around for a really long time and obviously infantry are going to be the tankiest commanders so for infantry uh again ring of doom is you're not going to go wrong with ring of doom ever or the horn of fury for sure you, you just won't go wrong with them but I would say for me uh and what I use on my Guan Yu you can see it here is ring of doom with concealed dagger I like that combination for infantry a ton but you could of course do a uh, ring of doom with Mora's web or Mora's web and concealed dagger for the maximum amount of debuffs if you're using a commander like uh Herald who's paired with somebody like Pakal or even with Martel then vengeance is a no-brainer this is, is exceptionally good on pretty much anybody with a high counter-attack damage already and by extension the greatest glory is pretty good but not as good as well Skolas's lucky coin is super niche but you might want to put it on an expertise Guan Yu I guess or like maybe an expertise Guan Alex right I mean the more shields on that pair the better so I guess you could do it but realistically you probably don't want Skullis's coin and then of course if you have Karak's war drums and you went here then I would say your tankiest infantry March is where you want this to be as well the one that is least likely to be targeted and swarmed down in the open field so a Pakal Herald this would be good for for open field fighting keep that in mind with all of that out of the way let's talk about iconic crystals okay iconic crystals are pretty hard to come by especially for free to play players it's only slightly easier for the whales because there are some achievements in the game now that give you a ton of these just for hitting certain milestones and those milestones are going to be hit much easier by the uh by the giga chad kraken whales however for iconic crystals i personally think the best place to put your iconic crystals is going to be your uh, your accessories here okay you can see i put it into four of them are into my legendary accessories here uh and the reason for this is because it increases your troop base health and the reason you want your troop base health is for the same reason that you wanted the health on the gatekeeper shield over the soccer fabuki attack okay the more base health you have the more your troops are going to survive in the open field so having it on the accessories is extremely good especially because you can move that iconic piece to another army and retain that benefit so let's say you only have one ring of doom and you put an iconic crystal into it well on Guan Yu it's giving you extra health for your infantry but I could just as easily move that over to my Boudicca and now it's giving health to archers so that's the only those the accessories are the only like transitory piece where you can gain a multiple uses out of it right so for me again the legendary accessories are where you want to use your iconic crystals first now beyond that if you have any talented boots or legs that's where you're going to want to put your iconic crystals next after you have uh, the accessories so first priority talented accessories beneath that would be regular accessories beneath that would be talented legs and boots this is the same reason these 
the legs and the boots also give you base health which are going to be great after that i would say if you have a talented chest or helmet that's going to be your next best place to go because that gives you bonus defense which is harder to get than attack not as hard as health but definitely up there and then finally i would say the last thing that you want to put your iconic crystals into are going to be your gloves and your weapon these are both going to give you extra base attack points which as i've stated earlier you already have a lot of now many of you might be saying omniarch what about leadership okay and i'm here to tell you that honestly uh you're really asking about trajan that's really like the what what other leadership primaries are you using other than Trajan? That's pretty much it, okay? And if that's the case, just ask yourself, what commander are you pairing with Trajan? Is it gonna be infantry? Great, then you want a leadership talented infantry set. Or if you're gonna pair him with a cavalry commander, like maybe Joan of Arc or William for extra like utility in the open fields, like you wanna just have a leadership talented cavalry set. And if you're gonna go full mixed army, then just try to max out the amount of health that you get across the board. But realistically, I think there are very few players who are going to legitimately use a fully mixed army is that really a thing I, I mean I never hear about it okay so if you're asking that question we're entering into like ranged combat meta and the game is about to change forever so I don't even know what's going on with Trajan okay uh Honda's the only other leadership commander I see people use and he's a secondary guys if you enjoyed this video if you found it useful drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm and you've already made it all the way to the end of this video so consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on the equipment here what are your favorite pieces of equipment and do you think this is going to be relevant when ranged combat comes into the game in november i wonder how that's going to change things up and if we get a new group type a new ranged troop how is that going to play into all of this i uh, I'm, I'm i'm nervous with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace